The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cowboys Storyline. It is Tuesday, the 26th, December 26th. Cowboys lost a tough one. You guys know this by now. We'll talk about it. Cowboys and Dolphins on Christmas Eve in Miami. Uh, down to the final seconds and couldn't get it done. Um, I got opinions about it. I'm sure you guys do as well. 888-855-2297. You can text us 817-290-3298. We saw what the Giants did. Giants were able to... Uh, you hang in there with the Eagles, but not enough to win it. The Eagles get the win. Now they have the one game lead. Um, the Cowboys are going to need some help if they're going to win the if they're going to win the NFC East. Obviously, and uh, they're going to probably need the Giants to 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 beat them in New York. If if the if the Giants are going to play like they did yesterday, if they play like that all all season long, it could happen. But uh, that's that's kind of that's probably the Cowboys' best bet right now. Still looking at the number five seed. Looks like. That's probably going to be the case, and not sure where the Tampa Bay, uh, Atlanta, uh, New Orleans, maybe all still have a shot there. Uh, but we'll we'll talk about we'll break down why the Cowboys are in this position and and, and what happened uh, Sunday against the the Dolphins. All right, let's get to the phone lines. Let's start us off. Big Al in San Antonio. He's the first caller. Big Al, what's up? Hey, good morning there, Nick, and happy holidays to you. You too. You too. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm still kind of pissed off on Sunday mm-hmm. because uh, my opinion is they, the play calling just changed after the first um, the first drive, after Lamb scored that, first, that touchdown. Mm-hmm. Everything just changed, man. I don't know what's going on with Mike. He, um, I don't know, man. I, I'm just getting frustrated now and getting pissed off. I, I might have to go down there and start coaching myself. All right. Well, come on. Uh, <laughs> you can get through security, you know, get in. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. you, you just wonder. I mean, everybody knows Tyree Kill's getting the ball. I mean, everybody, yeah. I mean, you know, and he gets nine catches. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they, they and they've done a good job this year of scheming CD open. But um, yeah. for, you're right. For some reason – it went away, you know, for what almost two quarters. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. It's mind-boggling. Uh, uh, I, did, I didn't get that one at all. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. I still don't. And uh, we'll see Saturday what they uh, come out to do. I know they came back strong, you know, with against the rush. Mm-hmm. I, and uh, let's see what they got next for Detroit. Yeah. But anyway, happy holidays to you, and I get with you later on. All right, thanks. Appreciate that, Big Al. Frustration pissed off he said yeah and, and you know I, I'm, I'm i hear you it's um it you know the thing about cd is they move him in the slot for this reason i mean for the reason of you really can't take him away when you have a guy that can that can go in the slot like that and um you know i mean dak dak will throw the football to who he thinks is open and he trusts everybody to make the play you know and um I, it's frustrating i think when you're watching it and you think you know, it's third and goal or whatever, and, and you you know, oh no, Hendershot didn't make the play. Well, no, Hendershot didn't make the hasn't made one this year. You know, Hunter Lipke, the fumble. I mean, which I think is still the biggest play of the game, um, and it's hard to do that on the first drive. But I thought it was. I thought that was an absolute killer, and uh, and not just him, but I mean the actual running back, like your lead running back. That that I mean, all you're looking for is a, is a little bit of a of a, a crease to get in, and you got a lot of room to score, and you don't score from the one that that was well not worse than the fumble because it got you a first down, but I mean that was bad that was that was bad and, and and that that speaks volumes I think for what the team is lacking in running at the running back position this year it just hasn't worked it just hasn't really worked like you wanted it to he's been okay. Tony Pollard has been okay, but he, you know, you wanted him to be a little bit better, um, and it just hasn't really been the case. And so, and they struggled to run the football, of course, yesterday or Sunday. Uh, all right, let's go to Brian in Kansas City. Brian is next. Good 
Good morning, Nick. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. Well, you know, I got to watch the Kansas City game, and uh-huh. he didn't look any better. He, he's he got a double whammy. He doesn't have an offensive line right now. He's got some injuries. Mm. He also doesn't have a number one receiver, and boy, does he look human. Yeah. Mahomes. And, talking about Patrick Mahomes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. He does not look like Superman that everybody's always saying. And, you know, I thought Dak had a great game for – probably two thirds of the game, you know, there was that lull in the middle, but, but, you know, the, the pass to cooks over, over Ramsey, um, you know, in the corner of the end zone there was great. He fought his butt off just running and just yeah. on for everything he could get. Our offensive line was bad. So I, I, you know, I'm not an offensive line coach, but on the broadcast, Olsen kept saying Idoga was blocking down the wrong direction. And that was just yeah. killing us with Bradley Chubb coming around that corner. But, you know, I I thought when I looked at this five-game stretch, I thought ah, maybe we go three and two, and I still hope for that. But, you know, yeah. this week I think is going to be a is going to be a tough one. We got the Lions coming in on a short week. Um, you know, and they're – if I had to pick another team other than San Francisco that I think is just a tough physical team in the NFC, they'd be it. Yeah. No, they are. You're right about that. They play just like their head coach played the game. Yeah. And uh, and, and not just that. I mean, if you look at their you look at their um coaching staff, I think they've got 10 guys that played uh in the NFL. I mean, it, it, and I'm not talking about, you know, who's on a practice squad or whatever. Like these these are guys that you know. Um and so that's the kind of coaching staff that he has has kind of surrounded himself with, but um but and, yeah, and I mean, you're, you're right. Going back to the game, I, I don't, I don't know what what's going on with 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 the Doga. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think that was ever supposed to be the option at left tackle, but but it was, and it has been all year. And you know, this isn't like Tyron was like last second scratch, not gonna pra- not gonna play. Idoga comes in like he was he was, did not practice all week with a back injury. So it, was, it, it it just he just didn't look prepared. I mean, I mean, I'm sure he was, kind of. But Bradley Chubb was the best player on their on their defense on their defensive line. We knew that going in. So if you're gonna pick a player to say, you know, let's not block him. Well, let's let, you know give someone free and we'll we'll block here and we have to let someone go. That's not the guy. And it was way too many times. I I didn't understand it. I don't understand it. They don't let Micah Parsons get free. I mean, ever. And so that is just a huge, huge breakdown. And not only did he let Chubb go a couple of times, but for, for nothing else. Like, he wasn't really blocking. You could just tell he was blocking the wrong guy because he wasn't really blocking anyone. And Tyler didn't need the help. You know, Tyler's got it. Tyler's got his guy there. So, um they're gonna. Have to, I've said all along. I think Tyler Smith should be playing at left guard, um, but at this rate, if you might have to switch this up, because I, I just don't think that's the option at left tackle. I, I, I never have, and so it's not just a knee jerk. I've never thought that. Um, doesn't look like a left tackle. Doesn't necessarily play in like one either. So I think they got to make a change there. They got to figure that out. Um, if, if that means put Bass at guard and Tyler Smith, I hate to do that. And they don't want to be moving Tyler Smith around during the season, but you know, that, that wrecked the game. You know, I think, I think their offensive line struggled. And I think right at that position, I think it, it wrecked the game. How many more can you do? So you have to make a, a switch if you can Tyler. I mean, I, I do believe Tyron Smith has a shot to play this week, uh, coming back. So that'll be, that'll be something to watch for sure. All right, um, let's go with a text question, though. Steve Williams, he's in Charlotte, North Carolina. After the game, I can't say I was really worried going into the Lions game. Am I wrong? You can be worried if you want. I mean, I I think if they don't play well, they'll lose. We we do think that we know this team plays a lot better at home. Um, but, but, you know, against, like, they, they really beat Philadelphia. I mean, Philadelphia was reeling, um, and they, they whipped Philly pretty good. Uh, Seattle, uh, you know, Seattle gave them everything they wanted, you know, and Detroit's playing way better than them. So, so yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll be, it'll be a tough game, especially when you look at, at, at matchups, 
You know, if you can't block the edge, the, the Lions have some guys that can really get in your face. If you can't stop the run, you know, the Lions certainly can do that as well. So it's going to be a tough game, but there'll be a lot of a lot of stuff happening there, emotions and all that stuff. It should be a great crowd. Uh, I think it'll be a great, you know, a great opportunity for the Cowboys to bounce back, but it's going to be tough. All right, Sebastian, he's in Savannah, Georgia. Sebastian, what's up? Good morning, Mr. E. Man, man, I hope everybody had a beautiful holiday. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's more than just the Cowboys. My girls had such a beautiful time yesterday, so I can't be but in a good mood. Uh, we now know our path. It's clear. We just got to play our best games and get ready for the playoffs. There's no winning the division or whatever the case is. We're in there. We got to handle business once we get there. Two things that this team has no choice but to look at at this point in the draft next year. If the best ability is availability, you have to look at getting a new tackle. Tyron's one of the best players in the world when he's available, but he's not available. If you're in business and you're unreliable, I can't do business with you. It's that simple. And we got to get on the other side, actually both sides, because you might need to upgrade your center a little bit as well. We need guys with rocks in their pockets on both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, because Hankins went down, and you can see in the Buffalo game, they literally just pushed us. Yeah. even though they're getting around the edges a lot of times, you got to be more so concerned about that goal line. And in the goal line, we can't stop a nosebleed right now. So if you could just talk about those couple of things, I hope you guys have a happy New Year's. I didn't get a chance to call before Christmas. So happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas to everybody. Have a great day, guys. All right. Thanks. Appreciate that, Sebastian. Um, so they get a lot of needs. I mean, you know, they, I mean, you think about it. Oh, they need a tackle, center. Uh, yeah, they need they need they need to upgrade that. I think uh, linebacker. Seriously, I mean that's that's a huge problem. Um, Demone Clark's not ready. I, it doesn't seem like Demone Clark. I just haven't seen him make a lot of plays this year. He, I know he leads the team in tackles, but he's just not making a lot of plays. And he's getting he's getting pushed around a lot more than I thought he would be, especially looking at him in college. Now I know he had the neck injury and. He's been cleared, and you you know it's been a year and a half, so you you'd like to think that's not not an issue. But for a big physical guy like that, he he has a hard time. Seems like getting off the block, especially when a guard or or, or somebody really physical gets his hands on him. I mean, we've seen it now two games in a row. Just a play that I'm I'm sure there's a meme about it. I mean, just getting thrown all around the place. So that that uh, linebacker, you know, then with Leighton Van Der Esch being out, and who knows what his future looks like. I mean, linebacker's a spot. Running back's going to be a spot, of course. Um, but you, but going to what you said, I mean, yeah, the, the, the line, it's not the same without Hankins. It's not. And that's why they went and got him last year. It's why they re-signed him. But in, and, then, and that's why they drafted Mozzie Smith, hoping that that would, you know, just, just be a guy that could kind of plug, you know, clog up the middle. But – it's not. It is not happening without without Hankins and Mozzie was in there. Um, that last play, you know, third and two, third and two, you got to stop them. You stop them. They kick a field goal. You got some time to maybe go down and, and, and get and get a shot, but um, they can't. They can't. You know, stop with Jeff Wilson or whatever. They they can't make the play. Mozzie and gets walled off. Oza Oza that whole side gets wall, walled off. Demone goes there. I mean, they just they just schemed it perfectly, and there was no shot to to stop them. So. Uh, and that was basically the game, but yeah, they they got they got issues all the way around, and and you know, I I think the Cowboys could have done a better job knowing what you just said about Tyron and and Tyron's availability, and and knowing that this is going to happen. I don't feel like Chuma Idoga had left tackle was. I don't feel like that was the right contingency plan move all you know all year long, and but. You know, they drafted awesome Richards, but, you know, he's not going to be the guy, you know, to be your your backup left tackle. But they, they went for Chuma. He hadn't he didn't have a ton of experience there playing left tackle. Uh, he had been hurt, and that's that's kind of who they went with. And, you know, it, it, it cost him, I thought, it cost him the, the other night. All right, let's go. Um, let's go James. Pastor James is in Midland, Texas. Hey, Nick, how's it going today? Good, man. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. I hope you, Chris, Jazz, and Josh, and everybody had a Merry Christmas. Thank you. And um, I, if I was Chuma Doga, I, I would hide in the uh, film room whenever they watch mm-hmm. that film because, I mean, you could just see it over 
and over again. Yeah. You cannot leave a guy like Chubb out there on the outside unblocked. And I mean, I really, I really wasn't really upset about the game because I felt like it was a better game than it was in Buffalo yeah. and it was in Miami against a playoff caliber team and they went down to the end but you know uh, if you look at all the the steel photos that you see when Micah is getting held I think maybe he just may need to just get off the ref's back, you know, start shaking their hands and being nicer to him, and maybe they'll give him some of those plays because it's crazy that he hadn't had a, a, a holding call called against him since October. Right. You know, and, I mean, you can just see where they're grabbing him, where they have him around his chin strap and all kind of stuff, and it just seems like that that uh, he's just, you know, getting the short end of the stick. But I will say that I felt a lot better after watching what the Ravens did to the 49ers last night. It made them look like they were vulnerable. It made them look like they were actually human, a human team, and that a defense could actually uh, play against that offense and an offense could run and and work against that defense. And like everybody's always talking about, there's a blueprint against the Cowboys. I believe that the Ravens showed a blueprint for what to do against the 49ers. So I'll get off, and I hope y'all have a great show. And I'll listen to what you have to say. Yeah. Um, I, I, thanks for the call, uh, James. I appreciate that. Uh, blueprints are tricky because just because you can do it doesn't mean that, that they can do it. I mean, we're seeing that with uh, I mean, with the Eagles. I mean, they have a blueprint on how to, how to get a yard on fourth and one, but not everybody can do that. Um, and not everyone can play the way the Ravens do, especially on defense. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're linebackers. Uh, you know they they've got two really good linebackers, and uh, you know they they they've got some great players, on, and they they are they're just a well oiled machine right now. They they're playing they're the they're the best team in football. I mean they're gonna I'm sure the power rankings will come out here uh, today if they're not already out. And Baltimore will be number one. I mean em- emphatically, of course. Uh, they're they're playing the best, and they've got a, you know they've got the MVP favorite right now, uh, and Lamar Jackson, who I. You know, I think is is amazing. I mean, I, I do. I, I know that he gets a lot of flack for being a running back or whatever. I'll take him on my team. You know, I mean, because because he he knows how to make plays and and he's and he's just a a nightmare to try to to stop. So, anyways, yeah, that was good to see them do that. But uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a mess right now. When you know, you look at Micah and Micah, you know, he's just. He, he's, he's he's frustrated, obviously, and he, you know he can't he can't play that way, and it's tough because you you can't you know you can't get penalties like that. And I, I I've heard people say, "What is he supposed to do? I, not hit the quarterback." That's I mean I'm not blaming him. I'm saying that's what you're not supposed to do. You can't hit the quarterback like that, especially really hard like that. It 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 didn't look like a penalty. Um, I know the rule says you get two steps, and he kind of didn't even take that. So I, I, I get all that. But when you go and complain uh, to the officials, one, you know, like a play or two before, and, and have your hands out and all that, and then you go hit the quarterback, it, the, they're never going to call it for you. They're not. And so he's going to have to figure that out. Um, and I don't, it's been, but it is amazing to think that it's been like, what, eight, nine games, and he can't get a holding penalty. Um, especially the way they call holding in some of these games. That's been a shocker. All right. Rob in Vegas. What's up? Hey, Nick. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Sorry. Take a drink of water. What's up with you? Listen, when this team goes on the road against good teams, it's like Groundhog Day. We've seen this the last few years. Tyler Smith doesn't play. Uh, I mean, I'm Tyron Smith doesn't play, we lose. Uh, we're going to average 20 points. That's our average pretty much on the road, and that's pretty much what we do against good teams. Dak doesn't play. He plays good. He doesn't play great like he does at home. He just plays good. Uh, we're going to have dumb penalties at bad times that are going to cost us big plays. Again, we've we had that. We have... Uh, is it coaching? Well, we got to put a lot of it on coaching because what do you? That's the common denominator. 
uh, Mike McCarthy, for whatever reason, cannot get this team to play on the road like they do at home. Not even, not even close, not even half. I've never seen anything like it. And what are you going to do? You, you hear the rumors that, well, maybe Belichick is going to come in. Well, I don't want Belichick to come in because that means this team didn't succeed. But you know one thing if Belichick came in. They're the lowest penalized team in the NFL. So we would definitely, he would definitely fix that. And I think he would fix that we wouldn't be soft in the trenches because we are. That offensive line, again, killed us during the game. And defensively, we played better against the run. But when we had to stop the run at the end of the game, when they knew it was coming, they couldn't do it. And Damone Clark is awful. I, I, I know he's there because we really don't have anybody else. The face mask penalty killed us at the end, but he just gets blown off the ball. That Now he's all over YouTube where you see him getting blocked like 25 yards down the field. So I don't know. I don't. I, I, unfortunately, like I said, I, I see Groundhog Day. You, you just pencil them in, they're going to score 20 points on the road. I think they'll beat the Lions. They, they match up good with them, and Jared Goff, uh, they have his number. I know Lions are better this year, but uh, I just, I just, unfortunately, I just see the scenario. We'll probably go to Tampa Bay. Hey, I'm not, I'm not totally confident they could beat Tampa Bay yeah. in, in Tampa Bay anymore. Going on the road on grass. I mean, it's, it's all these crazy things. And now the team is imploding. Yeah, Micah Parsons. Listen, Micah, this is today's NFL. You got to shut your mouth. This isn't the 90s, the 80s, where you could actually play real defense. You know what this league is about. So be quiet. You're not going to get the calls, especially if you criticize the refs. And I just don't know. I, I, unfortunately, I, um, I just have no confidence when this team leaves AT&T Stadium. All right. All right. Thanks for the call. Um... It's a lot to unpack there. Um, and honestly, like, they don't they don't need us to be confident. You know, they really don't. They don't need you to be confident. They don't need to be us to be confident. They really don't. They, they, they need to be confident. They need to figure out how to, how to go win. And, um, you know, I, I've just, I've seen it. I've seen it happen where, where you just don't. You know what we think is not is not exactly what happened. So yeah, I mean you you can go and look look like that. I mean, the caller just talked about Kansas City. You know they're not fans. They're not confident, and because of based off what you see, and you can only go off of what you see. But you know, like I said, they don't. We don't have to have confidence in them, and and they they have to figure out how to do it. And uh, you're right about Micah. Um, you know that's the tricky part there. Is that I know me, I I ask you know I I applaud the players for standing in front of the the, the mics after the game and talking because they don't all do it, they don't and the guys that are supposed to be the leaders and the captains they do it when they feel like it wins, you know good games, they don't do it all the time they're not consistent, so if you're going to be a superstar you're gonna you're gonna be the face of the franchise, you got to do that. And uh, so I, I applaud him for doing it, but he's not helping himself when the, by being honest. And you want that's another thing. You want people to be honest. You want them to say something. You don't, don't just give the company line, you know. Actually say what you're thinking. That's what the media always wants, but, but it's not helping him. It's not. There's no way that, that that's, that's helping him. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's something he's going to have to figure out. It's the same way with... That position. How do you be super aggressive to get around the edge as fast as you can and be flying at the quarterback? But then when he throws it, you can't hit him. I mean, it's 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 tough, you know. Breaks, and that's the thing. NFL doesn't care about breaks. They they this isn't you know the Midas. Okay, they they don't they don't give a crap about you stopping. What are you supposed to do? He was right there. Don't hit him. They don't care how fast you're going. You can't hit him. So common sense never really comes into play when you're talking about a quarterback, his legs, his knees, 
I'm not his knees, his head. I mean, anything. I mean, when a guy dives down like that at the last second, and you you're about to hit him in the chest, and he dives down, and you hit him, they don't care. They they, they don't. And so that's 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 why it's really really tough on these defensive players because they're moving so fast, and then you know all 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 you're seeing is what the end result is. It's not fair. And that's what happens though. All right, Mike in New York is our next caller. What's up, Nick? Hey. Love the show, man. I Been appreciate a it. Cowboys fans for a long, long time. Listen all the time. I think uh, I think my biggest concerns with the Cowboys is I think I like Gallup as a receiver, but I feel like since he's come back from that injury, he just he hasn't been the same. He just like I I get it himself, but he's just he hasn't been the same. Yeah. And then another thing is, I feel like Mike McCarthy, me and my cousin are die hard Cowboy fans, and we text all the time, and he lives down in Pennsylvania and stuff. And I honestly think, I think Mike McCarthy has to take, he has to get Dallas to the, like, NFC Championship game to save his job. I think he's on the hot seat. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's the second caller in a row about that. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. I don't know. I don't, I don't make that decision. There's only one person that does, and so you know it'll we'll we'll see how 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 this thing ends up you know this this year I mean um, because like I said I I use the analogy all the time but it's it's the perfect one because it is the roller coaster this is what this team is what the franchise is it's smooth here this is nice it's bumpy does twists turns stops is it, think the ride's over now it goes backwards I mean. It's it, it, it's the thing that makes this so exciting is also the thing that makes you want to throw up sometimes because it's just it, it never you can't get it you can't get ahead of it you can't figure this out so whatever McCarthy whatever Jerry decides when he wants to you know decide if, if, if you know he's he's credit he's he's credited him a lot he's given a lot of praise on on what he's done this year and uh, you know I think he does look at it like you know. Being consistent, consistent matters. Um, now, what consistently out of the playoffs in the division round, or do you look at it like consistently giving this team a chance to go and, and you know and, and compete? I mean, three straight years in the playoffs. While that might be your expectations, and that's expectations, but the reality of it is it's hard to do, and uh, and so you know you can't just be switching coaches all the time. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, I, again, it doesn't really matter till till the end, and then that's when we'll get a good determination of of where we are and what 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 goes on. One of the last callers, I think it was Rob, I guess, that said, "It is what it is. You're not going to make the playoffs. I mean, you're not I'm sorry, you're not going to win the division." But I mean, this is what I think will happen. I think that the Cowboys will beat Detroit. I think they'll they'll figure out a way to stop this and, and and win at home and it'll be a tough game but i think that they'll win and i think philly will beat the cardinals at home so what will happen is is they'll 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 put them at the same time i think on sunday the last game of the season dallas will go to washington the giants will get philly at home and they'll play at exactly the same time and i mean if the if the giants played like that at home and trying to win I mean, they could. They could win that game. And if they win that game and you beat the, uh, Washington, then you win the you win the East. So, and you move from the five to the – probably the two. Well, probably. We'll see what – yeah, I mean, I would think so. If you beat if you beat Detroit, you have to beat Detroit to get there. And so Detroit is a game ahead, but you'd have the tiebreaker. So probably the two. So, so it's, it's not – it's not likely, I don't think, but I mean, you know, leaning on the Giants to do anything isn't really likely. But that's that's kind of where it is. But you know, not to get too far ahead. You got to be got to be Detroit. All right, uh, J- Allen is in Long Island, New York. Allen, what's up? Hey, Nick. Uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family and everyone there. Chris. Thanks. You too. Do a great job. Appreciate that. I just have three points. Okay. Um, first of all. We need. I don't them. know if anyone's ever told you this. If you would have uh, used, if you would take them three points the other night, the Cowboys win. So uh, I know, I know. What's up, man? Uh, just one thing I've noticed. You remind me of the wet, uh, the White House uh, press secretary. Because man, when the Cowboys lose, I know probably so many people call. You, you keep taking questions, and what a great job you do. I appreciate that. But not the current. You know, you know, you know what I mean. You get the vibe I'm saying. But the three points I want to make. Yeah. Number one. 
how did Tony Pollard not score that touchdown? I don't know. That's number one. That's number a, two, I don't know. Micah Parsons, please, I beg you, Micah, just play football. Stay off the social media. Number three, how about Amari Cooper? Huh? Back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons with who the hell is his quarterback? All right. You know, that's all I wanted to say if you want to chime in on those three points. Yeah. But great job, Nick. Merry Christmas to you and Chris. Thank Talk you. Talk to you soon. All right. Um, all right. Good stuff. I'll start with Pollard. And I've said it earlier, but I, I just I don't I I don't know how you don't score. You you, you have to score there, and it, the play. If you can't score there, then why are they calling it? You know what? That is the play. I mean, it is an option for him to get. You got to make. You don't even have to make a guy miss, okay? Because you're right there. You just have to carry him into the end zone, and you can't get thrown around like like a helicopter, like at the one inch line. I mean, dive, put it across the line, whatever you have to do, have to score. I thought Cooks could have scored too. Honestly, I thought Cooks could have maybe done a little bit more on that end around too with Ramsey there. I thought there was a cutback uh, to be had, but I'm not, I'm not taking it away from Hunter Lipke for fumbling the ball. Okay. I'm like, that's, that's elementary type play. I mean, with Dak to 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 Lipke, that's ridiculous. It's 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 crazy that that you you know one guy had the ball and couldn't get in, and the next guy got in without the ball. <laughs> if you could just combine those guys together, obviously they score and win win that game. Parsons, we've said it. You know, I mean, he's got to. He's got to play through this. He's just got to figure out a way to play through it. I mean, I, I don't know anything else other than to say. I mean, they put the. I mean, he's tweeting out the, the shots, and you know, the the thing is, you always hear, well, they could call holding on every play. Well, but they don't. They don't. And you would think a guy with that many pressures and commands that much attention that he he would get a call, but he's not. And so I don't like to say, well, the officials are. Or, or plotting against. I mean that that stuff seems it seems pretty far fetched. It just seems that way. But what else can you say? I mean I I don't know what else you can say on this. This is one of the best pass rushers in the league. He's the most vocal person it seems like, and 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 critical at uh, the officials, and he doesn't get any calls. And so. I, I don't know. I don't know what else you can really say about it. So I, I'm just going to leave it at that. And then the third one, Amari Cooper, good for him. I mean, good for, good for Amari Cooper. He's always been a really good player. Always been a good player. But it don't sit here and think that you're going to get what you get out of Amari and you're going to get out of CD. I mean, they, 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 they pretty much play the same position. And for they, the Cowboys felt like for CD – to thrive, and really for Dak to thrive, for being honest, that that he needed to go and the, and the money they could use elsewhere. And they thought they had a playmaker in CD, and they said, you know what, we we we've got this guy. He can be this guy here, and we go use our money elsewhere. And they weren't wrong with that. They weren't because look what CD has done. He doesn't blow up to be one of the you know have two great seasons like this, probably with Amari Cooper. And I know what you're thinking. You're, you're thinking. Just have CD and Amari, and you know, get rid of Gallup, and then look, look what you have. And yeah, that would be great. But I, you know, they they wanted to use that money elsewhere, and I mean, but good for Amari because he's he's absolutely balling. He's playing great, and he's playing it with with inconsistencies at the quarterback position. All right, Jeremy in New York City, We're staying in New York here. Jeremy, what's up? Hey, uh, first time call. Thanks a lot for taking my call, Nick. Um, I just, I just so disappointed after that loss. It just seems that we can't just win the big ones when we really needed to count the most. Like the Eagles won, they had a chance for the division. To be honest with you, I don't think they're going to beat Detroit, and I just don't see how they're going to get out, be able to beat a team like San Francisco at all. It just seems to me the defense can dominate the lesser teams. And when it comes to the teams that have like good offensive linemen and good um, defenses, they can't do anything. And they're just not built for 
coming from behind. And I just never understood why they didn't build that team to be able to keep up, come from behind to make wins. It's like when they need a stop, they can't get it. Yeah. When they need a score, they can't get it. It's just very frustrating. Well, they did. I mean, it's hard to say they're not built to come from behind when they did. You know, they did. I mean, down 16-7 to seven going into the, the fourth quarter, I believe, and they came But back. how many games have they done that to? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. Four. I, I, I don't have the answer. I, I'm just saying they they are – they're they're definitely built more to come come from behind than they are to hold a lead. I mean, they can't run. That's true. They can't run. I mean, so I I think what you're saying is like mentally they don't do it. They they did. I mean, in my opinion, if they had won the game, they would have stolen it from the Dolphins. I don't think they were better than Miami. And and I if they go and and they get that touchdown and take the lead and then somehow something fluky happens, Miss the field goal, they fumble, whatever. I think the Cowboys steal that win. Um, I don't think it makes them a better road team or whatever. I mean, they just kind of are what they are. And um, do you see them coming out of the first round? Yes, yes, because I, I, I think that I don't necessarily think, and I'm going to do the math on this. I don't think there is a this night and day difference in how they play at home and the road. I don't think that's the difference on how they play. I think the difference is is who they play on the road and that's at home. True. And if you just and I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I mean, you guys could do it too. I mean, for tomorrow's show, but I'm just gonna. I, it's something I keep wanting to, to look at. Just the just the winning percentage of the teams they're playing. And this is not an excuse. It's just to, to look forward. I think when they are playing teams that they can beat, I think that they they will win. Um, but I don't think they're better. Than, than than the Dolphins, I, they weren't in that game. Definitely not better than um, you know than Philly that that day, or of course the 49ers. I just don't think that they're better. Buffalo, Buffalo, they weren't definitely weren't better either. Buffalo knew how to play a game like that. They knew how to adjust. The Cowboys just didn't. And that's. Do you think they can a, get out of the second round? Well, yeah. I mean, we're, okay. Who are we playing? Where? What happened in the first game? Did Dak play great? Did he not? Did they get turnovers? Is Hankins back? You know, I mean. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this is why it's hard to play this game about who are they playing? Who is in the second round? You know, I mean, you could you could be the five seed, go to Tampa, beat Tampa. And the mask is, do you think they could get out of the second round? I guess you're right. It depends on who they're playing. I think I mean, they can beat Tampa. I think they can beat whoever is coming out of the South. I don't know who is going to be, be in the second round. If they had to play Philadelphia again. You'll take that, in Philly, you? I don't know what they would do. I, you would take that, wouldn't you, over any, anything else? I mean, I think you would take at Philly over 49ers on the road or, oh, sure. or even Detroit on the road, you know? Yeah. Detroit, I think they can beat Detroit. Detroit, I think they can make golf. I think if they can get the pressure, they can get the golf. It's just they got to get the line back to going together. And next year, they really got to repass that line. Tyra it's, Smith needs to go. He's a Hall of Famer, but he's always injured. He does, does you no good on the bench. Zach Martin is, is getting up there in age. They need to really put together that line, and they also need a bruiser as a running back. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's um, – yeah, hey, Chris Beam just pointed out here, can Philly win the first game? I mean, you know, the NFC kind of is getting hit in the mouth a little bit here, and um, and it, it's it's wide open. That's the thing. It, it's wide open. But I don't think anyone's beating San Francisco, though. Well, I mean – They're good on both sides of the ball. Did you watch football last night? I mean, I mean, I, I understand that not everyone's Baltimore, but I mean, that I've also seen a team like Denver come in and beat the Cowboys and kind of shake things up a little bit, and then they're really not the same. We'll see. Everyone's been waiting yeah. for Brock Purdy to have a four interception type game and lose like that, and and it, and it <laughs> happened. Though they'll, they'll bounce back. But thanks for the call, Jeremy. Good stuff. Thank you. I, I, I can hear the frustration there. Um, what what's this team gonna do? And and I go back to last year because last year they couldn't have entered the playoffs in any worse shape than losing like they did in Washington. It wasn't just a loss to Sam Howell in Washington. It was just the way they played. It was just terrible. It was like, this is this is bad. Hopefully they'll turn it on from the playoffs. And they did. They did. Everyone but Maher turned it on in Tampa. And 
uh, it was an amazing game. And then they went to San Francisco, and you felt different about it. And they played; they were playing, and they had a shot there. And then, of course, Pollard gets hurt, and I think that changed everything. And they still had their chances; they just didn't win. They weren't they weren't good enough to win that game. So, I think you just got they have to figure out a way to get some momentum for them, their confidence, not yours, not mine, not anyone else's. And I can't harp on that enough. So. I get it. I mean, and and I go back to, and I know y'all don't care, but I'm just saying, if you would have thought we here in Dallas of how the Texas Rangers entered the the, the playoffs, you're like, oh God, they're not going to hardly win anything. They they they're not very good. They're definitely not good on the road. And they never lost a game at all. And they just went and swept the whole road and won the World Series. Doesn't matter what we think. Matters what they think in that locker room or clubhouse or whatever, and figure out a way to turn it on. And that's what Mike McCarthy's job is, is to figure out how to do it. They don't have to be a great road team in the regular season. But when whoever they're facing right there, are they good enough to win? And that's where I think, yes, when you look at this game, it's not a moral victory or anything like that. They had a chance to win. They didn't win. But are they good enough to go on the road, whoever they have to, to play, face whatever challenge they have to face and, and win. And I think they can. I think they can do it. Based off of what we've seen, how good we think that they are, can they Can they win? Can they be in the final five, ten minutes of the game? Then it's up to them to go make the play. And maybe maybe they will, maybe they won't. All right, Jose in Minnesota is our next caller. Yes, hello. Nick, are you there? I'm here. How are you? Hey, uh, oh, I'm doing just fine, man. I hope you had a good Christmas. I did. First time caller? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I've been a Dallas Cowboys fan since I lived uh, in McAllen, Texas. And now I live in the cold tundra. Yeah. We don't have many calls but, from Minnesota. I had to go back and look on this state to make sure. Do we have some Minnesota? I think we had one. But this is this is like our second one for sure. So it's not a state yeah, that's yeah, been represented a lot. Yeah, we have a lot of fans here. I mean, yeah. a lot of uh, – uh, Spanish uh, people who live down in South Texas move up uh, up here, but uh, hmm. uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, um, I just you know, and you might have already uh, pointed this out uh, while I was on hold, but you know, uh, what happened with the left tackle? Um, there was a couple of plays where the guy just flew by there. Um, another point, as well as you know, and, and again, you, you probably touched it. That's okay, I. Uh, but, you know, if we make it to the playoffs, how are we going to get there if we don't play, you know, lights out? Because the way that we played against Philly was, like, ab- absolutely amazing. Um, and, you know, we do we, we do get a little emotional, especially on, uh, you know, Twitter. You know, I see everyone, uh, you and everybody else on the, uh, you know, the writing staff that people just go crazy. And, you know we're just tired of losing, you know, and a lot of people say, you know, I'm tired of hearing you complain. It's like, yo, man, I'm tired of losing. You know, last time we won a Super Bowl, you know, was the 1995 season. So yeah, that's really all I got. All right. All right. Appreciate that. Um, and that's just a different mindset. You know what I mean? That to me, that's not considered losing, but, um, you know, uh, not making the Super Bowl to me is not losing, but, it, everyone feels differently, you know. The whole if, if you're not first, you're last. So, I, I don't, I don't. You're talking to the wrong person on that. I've been doing this for 25 seasons, and and I haven't seen a Super Bowl or an NFC Championship game. So, I, I maybe I'm not, I'm not the right person for that kind of sympathy because if I had that mentality, I couldn't do this job. You know, I couldn't have done it for 25 years. So I'm not saying my my perspective is right. I'm just saying that's my perspective. I've I started here, saw an eight and eight season, and then three five and eleven seasons. And building here we are trying to build this 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 website and build you know the 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 fans and 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 getting them to to come back you know daily you know what are we providing them so they can do that you know it's not easy to do and so my point is is I look at things differently I don't look at it just in the playoffs on how they do in the playoff I take these games I look I, I find some things to 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 make them interesting knowing that you know let's see how this all happens when we get to the playoffs and and you know if they don't they don't win they don't go to the Super Bowl 
I don't consider it losing. I just consider it, you know, I'm obviously disappointing and it just keeps adding and growing to the the drought, if you will. Um, but, you know, I, I look for the silver lines. Maybe that's just that's just what I have to do to kind of do this thing every day. But I, I'm not telling you how to how to be a fan. I mean, what works for y'all was what works. Um, Jose, you, you said you talked. Yeah, we did talk about Chuma, obviously, on left, left tackle. And um, the, he just <laughs> – I mean, he needed help. I mean, I thought they were two guys short on Chubb to block. I thought he would need two guys to block, and they at times thought zero, and that, that cost them. George in Miami, last caller of the day. George. Hello, uh, Nick, first-time caller. How are you doing? Thank you. Here you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, my opinion is, and I've been – watching this for quite a long time. I know it's easier said than done, but this team needs to build in the trenches, whether it's offensive line, defensive line. And when you win championships in the trenches. I remember Jimmy Johnson always saying that. Mm-hmm. That's my biggest beef with this team. It seems like when the, the game is on, especially defensively, we just cannot seem to really stuff these people. And that's my biggest uh, beef for the last few years. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. I mean, that's they, they, you're right. Inside out is how it works, and you know they are not they're not strong enough to make these plays when they they need to go score and punch it in from the one. Not only are they not running it in, but then later in the game they're not even trying to run in. I mean, you kind of get the sense that when they had a ten yard sack, it's like, well, this will help them score, and they did. They can't just they can't just push their way in. And they're getting pushed back. It's not a good combination. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, that's where it needs to start, in my opinion. That's that's where championships are won. And it's frustrating. Uh, I agree. Tyron's got to go. And you better get a, a better anchor, uh, some some really big hogs in the middle of that offensive line. Yeah. Well, um, it's a good start. Thanks for the call. But let's also... I, do you have another point? No, sorry. Do you have one more point? No, no. No, that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You know, real quick, though, when you look at this team, you know, it starts, it starts within, is, you know, the trenches and all that. If you look at the, they don't, they're not not doing that. I mean, they, they drafted Mozzie Smith. In their mind, drafting a, a defensive tackle, 26th overall, like, this is going to shore up their defensive line immediately. And it hasn't been the case. They drafted Tyler Smith the year before that to shore up guard position immediately and then eventually left tackle. You know, they drafted Micah Parsons. They didn't really think that he was a pass rusher just yet. Um, you know, that was kind of from a linebacker standpoint. C.D. Lamb the year before that. And then Tristan Hill, defensive tackle in the second round. It didn't work out either. So, it's not like they're not using resources to to that. Um, they got to be better at it, and this team's drafted well, but obviously they got to be better at that. I mean, so I I think they they know the issue. Um, you know, continuing to to draft on the offensive line, and this year they they made a, a rare splash a defensive tackle, and it is, so far hasn't hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. He hasn't been the difference maker that they obviously thought he would be, but uh you you're not wrong and and you and there's a lot of callers that thought that the offensive line, defensive line right there in the center. That's been the problem. They're getting pushed around on defense and they're not doing enough pushing on offense. And that's just a bad combination, especially when you're about to face some teams in the playoffs. So the teams that are there, are the teams that are probably pretty good at doing that. Detroit is one of them. We'll obviously talk about them a little bit more. Uh, in the week. All right. Thanks for, for everyone for, for calling today. Um, appreciate you guys coming back and, and, and sharing your, your thoughts and your frustrations. I get it. Tough loss. Uh, but you know what? Cowboys still have some, some football ahead of them. We'll see what they do with the opportunity. All right. For Chris B., I'm Nick Eatman. We will see you tomorrow on Cowboy Storyline. See you. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!